the same place purposely for the rallies of other candidates. And I noticed when the political parties held the rally, they had the, well, your crowd was as big as theirs, but theirs was, well, better organized. They would yes. come in banners, streamers, uniforms, etc. You only had, I think they were using light bulbs in your, uh, <laughs> on your stage. It, it looked like one of the 1950 rallies, you know, uh, which I used to cover during the time of Garcia Macapagal, uh, uh -huh. etc. You know? And I was sort of saying, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't look as if she's going to make waves. And yet, in those areas, you know, I understand you were, you did very well in the Calabar Zone, you did very well in Laguna Quezon, where I also watched these rallies. These are areas where, you know, the governor is LDP, the congressman is L, the mayors are, uh, are uh, belong to the NP or LP, and yet you did very well. And oh. in one of our last rallies, Louis, matutuwa kang makinig, may rally kami sa Sampalok na ang aming plataforma was made of second hand plywood hmm. and boards, kaya nahulog sa butas. Si Jun Magsaysay na kandidato naming pagkabisi presidente and he suffered a superficial flesh wound as a result. Dahilan nga sa wala nga kaming pera ang pambili ng bago man lang ng mga kahoy para sa aming mga entablado. Ganun pa man nanalo tayo, hindi lamang sa mga syudad o sa mga highly urbanized areas, sa mga lungsod, pati na sa countryside. Manaala ninyo, merong nationwide presidential survey ang CNN Radio Veritas through its radio network. And they called it Bosses ng Nayon. It was focused only on the countryside and on the rural areas. And I was also number one there by an even wider margin than I have so far maintained in the surveys concentrated on the urban areas. That is why those doomsayers who are saying pag dumating na ang resulta galing sa rural areas ay mawawala na itong pangunguna ni Miriam sa survey, they are clutching at straws because the empirical data already strongly supports the proposition that when the rural votes come in, my margin will grow even wider. So I just don't see how they are going to create their own reality at this point. Okay, we'll take a break for a few reminders. Okay, meron pong mga tanong, pati sa akin. Uh, I'm going to let the questions go through because we only have about 14 minutes left. Uh, Cherub Mercado Balagtas Bulacan. I read the article, Sino si Miriam Santiago, and it said, Miss Santiago has been paying you, Louis Beltran, 50,000 a month to speak, publicize good words of hell. How true is this? Eh, kung sasabi ko ako, tatanungin nyo. Pag dininay ko, eh, it's up to you to decide. Ang masasabi ko lang, the day she pays 50,000 to anybody, itapal nyo sa patay, mabubuhay. <laughs> George Sison Makati, Beltran, did you ever imagine at the time you interviewed Miriam and Arab that one day they will become president and vice president? Secret. No, I didn't. Uh, at, that, at that point in time, the reason for the Miriam Arab interview was because people kept saying it was the dream team. I didn't realize that, uh, at least as far as the counting is concerned, that was going to be the lead team. Okay, we have a lot of uh, questions here. I'd like to give them a chance number to be able to ask you directly. Attorney Sancho Almeda, Laguna, will you get the best and the brightest to help you in carving a new future for the Philippines? Will you form a scout team to look for this talent? Yes, I have to form a committee whose only function will be executive search. And my behavioral pattern in this respect has already been displayed when I was immigration commissioner. I gathered as my associate commissioners and part of my executive staff people whom I did not even know very well personally, but who had very high standing in their respective professions. You know, I noticed very few people remembered your senatorial team, no? But I was looking at the curriculum vitae of your senatorial team and I was amazed because so many of them are cum laudes, are honor graduates of law, they have all kinds of degrees. Uh, so I, I, I would presume even that you applied a certain standard to. Exactly, yes. I've always looked at the bio data or the CV, the curriculum vitae of the person plus his track record. Okay, Antoinette Rodolfo, Quezon City, what can you say about the comment that your administration will be another dictatorial government? Lahat ng ito mga kuro-kuro. Sana naman ay tingnan ang ginawa ko nung nakalipas para malaman natin kung anong gagawin ko sa kinabukasan. Huwag sana tayo magtanim ng mga kuro-kuro sa isip ng ating mga mamamayan na hindi naman totoo dahil maliwanag na sinusubukan lamang natin naguluhin ang sitwasyon. Huwag sana ganon. 
Gloria Manalang San Juan, if you become the next president of the country, will you allow the cardinal to dictate to you? Just like the... Oh, wag na natin idagdag din this flex. <laughs> will you allow the cardinal to dictate to you? Cardinal Sin is one of the most highly trained and intellectual religious leaders in the country. My doctorate siya galing sa Rome, if I remember, just like many archbishops and bishops. And he knows, he has no app, he knows that because it would be totally inappropriate and possibly ineffective, I believe that he, even he himself, has no aptitude for this direction. So there is no basis for that fear expressed. And certainly, I would resist it if it came from any religious quarter, because our constitution provides the separation of church and state shall be inviolable. Okay, your, uh, your uh, campaign has been uh, geared on graft and the, uh, solving the problem of graft and corruption I, and most of it I think is with respect to the executive department. There's an interesting question. Irvin Domingo Jr. Panikitarlak, in case you get elected, paano ninyo matatanggal ang graft and corruption sa Congreso, sa Senado at sa mga munisipyo? In case you get elected, I've already <laughs> been elected <laughs> by the Filipino people. Um, no, you know, the Comelec says you shouldn't do that. No, uh, well, you're not proclaiming yourself. You're just, I think you're just joking again. <laughs> Ang sinasabi lang natin, tatlong araw na akong nangunguna. Ah, okay. Tatlong araw ka na nangunguna. Anyway, That's right. how will you solve the problem of graft and corruption in Congress, Senate, at municipal level? Unang-una, we must beware of the danger of generalization. Hindi natin sinasabi na lahat ng tao sa Pilipinas corrupt para ba tayong nag-imbento ng honesty in public service para bang tayo lamang ang tapat. Ang nakakarami ng mga empleyado sa gobyerno ay talagang matitino tapat na mga tao. Yun lang kung minsan nasasapawan sila ng mga maiingay. At ganun din sa Kongreso. In fact, at this point, Louis, I would like to emphasize that I have already taken certain initiatives of a legislative direction. Mm -hmm. Lumapit na ako kusa sa mga leader ng Kongreso at sa mga tingin ko ay magiging incoming na kasapi ng Kongreso. Kako sa kanila kung ano man mga pagkukulang ko sana ipagpasensya na ninyo ako dahil tapos na ang, ang oras ng kampanya. Sana turuan na lang ninyo ako kung paano tayo maka, makikipagtulungan para sana'y makapagbigay ka agad ng serbisyo sa publiko. So, sa ngayon Kaya, pa lang, nakikipag-meeting ka na sa yes, mga leaders ng Congress? That's right. And congressmen-elect and senators-elect? They have been elect. very receptive and very supportive. And so, the next surprise that we will deliver to the country, apart from the victory of a non-politician like myself, which will be a first in Philippine electoral history, will be, the next surprise will be the smooth working relationship between the executive and the legislative branches of government. Okay, that's if you get elected. Uh, let's keep saying that because uh, Mrs. Eusebio Tondo, ano ang magagawa ninyo para mabawasan ang utang ng Pilipino, ng Pilipinas? Hindi problema ang utang, maski yung utang sa mga iba yung bansa. Kasi yung ating utang na sinasabi, merong local component, merong foreign component, and most people are worried about the foreign debt, which now stands in round figures at about 30 billion US dollars, about 29.7 billion. It fluctuates from month to month. Kasi halimbawa, sa South Korea, 40 milyong dolyar ang kanilang utang pero hindi sila nang problema dahil ang exports nila were 60 billion US dollars. Kaya madaling bigyang lunas iyan. All we have to do is promote our export-oriented industry so that we can effect a turnaround in our trade position. Kaya hindi problema ang utang sa ibang bansa 